Welcome to the Freshman Foundation Podcast, helping you make the jump from high school athletics to the collegiate level and beyond with your host, Michael Huber. Hey everyone, I'm Mike Huber, founder and CEO of the Freshman Foundation, a podcast specifically about the transition from high school to college athletics. My guest today is Ava Nielsen, a senior soccer player at St. Anthony's High School in Melville, New York on Long Island. Ava was named as the 2020 Catholic League Player of the Year by Newsday. Ava was also named to the first team All-State Soccer Team in New York State. Ava is committed to play soccer at the University of Louisville. Please welcome Ava to the podcast. Hey, Ava, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. So I'll just say for the people who are listening, I'd say there are three reasons why this podcast is particularly special to me. One is because Ava is from my hometown of Malvern, Long Island. So she's representing where I grew up. Two, she's the first female athlete I've had on this podcast. I've had other females, but not an athlete. So this is like a first. And third, Ava happens to be my cousin. So we, uh, our grandmothers are, were sisters who uh, came over from Italy many years ago. So uh, Ava is one of my family members. So there's a lot of uh, excitement and pride on my end about having the chance to talk to her about this. Yes, there's a lot of excitement on my end too. Good, I can see it. I can see it on your face. So, 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 just tell me. So, how are you doing? First of all, um, I'm doing good. It's kind of different this year, just with everything that's happening. We're adjusting, and I'm still playing soccer as much as I can. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Yeah, you know, it's uh, about the same. You just you find a way to make the adjustments you need to make to keep going. Uh, I know every time that I'm uh, talking to your mom, she says you're, you're training, so it sounds like you're keeping pretty busy. Yeah, I am keeping busy. <laughs> do you have Do you have any time to have fun at this point? This is the most free time I've ever had. When I'm not doing homework or playing soccer, I do get to see my friends. <laughs> That's excellent. So based on what my my research was telling me that you started at St. Anthony's and then you went to play developmental and then came back for your senior year. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So tell me about that. Um, so the development academy, I started playing sophomore year and it was really sad that I couldn't play high school because all my friends were playing and then my friends were on varsity and they're doing like they all friends who are older than us, all the upperclassmen. But I knew I was making the right decision because it was more training, first of all. Like usually club ball, you don't train in the fall. And we were going like four days a week in the fall, like really touting it. And then we had more showcases. So I just thought I knew I couldn't do both. So I had to choose one. And I chose DA so I could play in college because that was more important. Well, it does sound like it sounds like you made a good decision. But like, you know, like anything else, it comes sometimes it comes with a little bit of sacrifice, right? Yeah, it did definitely come with sacrifice. But I'm very grateful that I got to play this year. Yeah. What was that like coming back to play at St. Anthony's with your friends and things? It was the best experience. I loved school ball so much. And just all the girls, like we're really just such a close team. And it was it was definitely different this year because we couldn't like hang out as much or, you know, you had the mask on, but it was it was really the best. Everyone was just so friendly. Yeah, it's hard to substitute for playing on a team with with your friends and especially when you're doing well. And it seems like based upon what I can see, there's a lot of really special players on that team. So you must have had a great season. Oh, yeah. Our team was stacked. We had (laughs) so many great girls. And we ended up winning the championship this year. All right. So so take me take me back a little bit, right? So like where did it like where did you start? like start playing soccer? Like what was your journey from kind of the beginning when you first started playing to like where you're at now, which is on the verge of, you know, playing division one soccer? Um, yeah. So I started playing soccer when I was five, just, um, my dad actually coached my CYO team and then we got into club ball. I switched over. I remember my mom asked me, so I was just playing on like a a regular town team and I tried out for Albertson Fury, which was like the top team in like Long Island at the time. And I made the NPL team and my mom asked me, she was like, do you want to do this? Like, it's going to be a lot of traveling. It's going to be a lot more pressure. But like, if you want to do this, like I'm behind you every step of the way. And I told her that's what I wanted to do. So I joined that team. I eventually made the ECNL team, which was is the top team. And then I played DA. Oh, and I also 
started training with um, private trainer um, Mike Demacus. He played a large role in my development. Like, there's no way I would be going to Louisville if it wasn't for him. He really helped me and made me improve and be the player I am today. Absolutely. First of all, shout out to Pete and Phyllis, mom and dad. I haven't seen them. <laughs> haven't seen them in a long time, but it sounds like they're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm very thankful for both of them. My my mom gave up so much to help me. That's awesome. That's really cool. It's nice to have somebody who has your back like that. And it sounds like you are motivated to do the work, right? Which is not always the case, right? A lot of kids who are in sports, and I'm sure you know some who are pushed by their parents to do things that maybe they don't want to do. But it sounds like it was completely your decision to kind of make those sacrifices at every level to get to where you wanted to go. Yeah, that that was a big thing with my parents. They did not want to push me at all in any way. And my mom told me if, if I quit soccer right now, she'd be really disappointed in me. But I mean, what is she gonna do? She wasn't gonna make me play. But yeah, I'm it really I'm I'm really a motivated person and I wanted it so badly. And I think that's why I got to where I am, because I just kept working hard at it and it eventually paid off. I, I don't know much about the DA system. So how did that work? How did you get into it? Did you get recruited? Like, how does that work? So Albertson Fury, they had an ECNL team. And basically, ECNL was the top league for girls in the country. For the boys, the DA is the top league. I They started this new DA league. DA league was only for boys, and they started it for girls too. And then um, I, it was my sophomore year. There was a bunch of rumors that Albertson was losing the ECNL status and whatever. And we ended up playing DA that year. I was really nervous because I, I don't know, I thought ECNL was my best bet, but I just stuck with the club and was like, this is where I need to be. Um, so then we played DA and I actually liked it better than ECNL. Like I thought the, the level of coaches were the same the caliber of girls were, were the same the only difference was you're training more it just seemed like the right decision in development yeah i'm i'm learning more about that process because i work with some soccer players boys mostly who are in high school and i'm learning about the da system and how that in the united states you know soccer you know club soccer there's just not as much opportunity to play and train it's very limited so if you want to develop you're just it's hard to because you're not getting as many touches as you might if you were in say a european player or something like that or in different you know just a regular like club player in the u.s yeah that's exactly the case so it sounds like that extra work that extra sacrifice really went a long way to put you in the position to be able to choose where you wanted to go to college yeah and it's not saying that high school isn't good especially like my st anthony's team they're amazing like the girls are all going to like top you won schools like most of them it's just it was just the teams you're playing against well we're we were the best at st anthony's in our catholic high school league you're not like playing against another da team who's training all year right the quality of the players from top to bottom is just not as good as it might be in the da yes exactly all right well listen i mean i think if there's anything that's really important is you know to get better at what we're doing a lot of times we have to challenge ourselves even if it maybe is a little bit a little bit uncomfortable so i mean were there any moments like when you're in the da where you maybe question your decision um i remember junior year all my that's when all my friends made varsity they were all friends with the upperclassmen and they were walking out it was winter pep rally and they were walking out and they had the captains and then they named the starters. And I just wish like I could have been a part of that. But at the same time, I think I made the right decision playing DA because now I'm going to get to play another four years where some of my friends might not get that opportunity. Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, I think everybody has regrets and things that they do because you can't have everything, but it sounds like you had a very clear picture about where you wanted to end up. That's pretty cool that you were able to say, this is what I want to do. You did it. And now you're, you know, you're on the verge of going. So that's, I mean, congratulations, I think is uh, in order there. Thank you so much. I'm very excited. Yeah. So, so tell me now, tell me about the recruiting process. When did that start? What did that look like? You know, how was it for you? So I started looking at schools 
my freshman year, maybe even eighth grade, like we started very young. And I think that's very typical in girls soccer. I don't know about other sports. But so we started very young. I didn't really know. I still am not 100% sure about what I want to major in. So I was kind of just looking at looking for a good soccer and academic school, and maybe like a city, you know, somewhere where I could have fun. And so I, I also I really wanted to play in the ACC. That was my big thing. I was looking at a bunch of other schools. And I went to Louisville actually three times before I committed. And I I just fell in love with it, honestly. The girl, I think the biggest thing for me was that the team was so close. Like every girl, it seems like if I were to go there, as now I am going there, like it seems like I was walking into like 25 new best friends. And I also, the coaches were just so nice. I just, it was really the people that made it for me. Was there anything about the recruiting process that maybe you didn't like so much? Um, well, I didn't. I my mom took me to a bunch of camps. I think I spent my whole my entire summer last year just going to camps. I kind of just really did the recruiting process on my own. I didn't the camps were very stressful because it's like there's people judging you and then they give you like a lunch and it was like never <laughs> good. It was <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like first like and the, like weather conditions, it was either like super hot or super cold. I had to do it, so <laughs> I would say that was the only thing I didn't like. And maybe like the stress factor, because um, it just the whole process is very stressful, especially like I committed pretty late, I would say. And just not knowing where I was going to be playing in college and like just like all the all the sacrifices I made, like, is it going to pay off in the end, basically? Yeah, I think there's I, I think that that is I mean, that's just I think that's very common, right, that you know, you'd want to have certainty at certain point, right? Like you, you don't want to let it drag on. And it's really interesting. What I'm learning about the process is in other sports anyway, is that some sports you could commit really early and that a lot of athletes, I think, do that because they take the chance to commit. Like if they have an offer that they like, they're just going to take it, right? So they get it over with, right? But a lot of the coaches, they want, they don't like that process, right? They want to offer you much later so that they can know about more about you, see how you develop as a player, right? And then there's this like conflict in the, in a system, right? So for you, I'm sure you would have loved to have it wrapped up a little bit, a little bit earlier. How come you think the process went longer or you, you committed later than maybe you could have? Um, I was definitely a late bloomer. I, my development or my success really comes from my private training with Mike. Like I, that was when I really, I've been training with him since freshman year. I mean, of course, stuff on my own, but him giving me like that direction of what to do really helped. And as soon as I got that down, I just kept going to him. I'd go to him like every week, some twice a week, if you're doing like a group training and then I'd do fitness with him and then I'd do stuff on my own. And I was never like, on my town team, like, you, like I was like a standout. But then when you get to ECNL, like all the girls are so good, you know, they all it's like the top girls in the country and you're playing against them. A lot of people were like, she's not gonna play in the ACC. And I just I wanted it so badly. And I wanted to prove everyone wrong. So I just kept working for it and like hoping that it would pay yeah. off. Yeah, I mean, again, the thing I hear you're talking about is like, you're just so motivated internally, right? Like, so that's something I talk a lot about with my athletes, right? There's internal motivation motivation and there's external motivation, right? What you just described is a combination of the two, but really at the end of the day, you were so internally driven to do the work to get to where you wanted to go, right? The ACC kind of prize was there, right? You were shooting for it and that was motivating you. But like, there's no way you can get there if you can't like get up every day and be like, I'm going to go do three hours of training, you know, and go travel to play. If you, if you don't want to put that work in, like it's not going to happen. It's really very cool. Very cool. So um, when so when did you commit? Like what, what was the timeline? When did you commit to Louisville? So I committed, I was offered in June going into my senior year. They were like, they basically gave me, they said, there's no rush to decide. Let us know where your head's at in two weeks. So I, I mean, to me, that was like, no rush, but like, <laughs> let us know in two weeks. Like, need to decide so then I I actually I called both I was at my friend's house we just like hang out by her pool this was 
actually in quarantine, there was a dead period with NCAA soccer. Then I went to um, my, this was in the summer. I went to Mike and he was like, Ava, did you call your coaches? And I didn't call any of them. And he kind of ripped into me a little. He was like, you need to call your coaches. The dead period was just lifted. Like you need to get a hold of them. So I went home and called all my coaches. I called Louisville and they actually never like emailed me back and I went to their camps and like I was playing so well and I was like I guess they're just like not interested in me I don't know why they're not calling me or emailing me back or like letting me know that they got my email I called them and then they rescheduled a call and I called them and they offered me a spot right there so I called them basically not like thinking anything of it like maybe just tell me where they you know where they were in their recruiting process and they offered me a spot right there I was like oh my gosh <laughs> I called my parents actually and neither of them answered. I was like, oh my gosh. And then my mom, my dad called me back and he was so happy. And then my mom texted me. She was like, I'm in the supermarket. Is it important? I'm like, yes, it's important. Can you answer your phone? <laughs> well, I mean, but 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 in all seriousness, like that's a credit to you. And that's something I talk to a lot of high school athletes about. The idea that sometimes you have to just advocate for yourself. You have to follow up with coaches. It may not be that they're not interested in you. It's like you just, they have other stuff going on, right? If you want to know the answer or if you're really committed to getting the result that you want, like you've got to take responsibility for that. And I think a lot of high school athletes don't necessarily see that as being important or they don't know to do that or they're too they're too timid or they're too like afraid to like be, you know, assertive. And it sounds like you did that, which I'm guessing the coaches love that because when I talk to college coaches, everybody tells me, regardless of sport, I want an athlete who reaches out to me. I want an athlete who takes charge of the process. I want someone who could look me in the eye. Like they want athletes who are going to be responsible for their success. I think that goes a long way to getting what you want. Yeah. So that's, Reaching out is honest, probably like the second most important thing next to your development because you need to get in front of these coaches, you know, and they're talking to so many other kids. Like it's so easy for them to forget about you. So I just, I mean, I tried to email every week. They were probably so annoyed with me. Just like, oh, I just got my grades back. <laughs> You're going to be, you'll be a good salesperson one day because that's what you have to do. You've just got to <laughs> be persistent because like you said, like, it takes a lot of self-awareness to understand that people are just busy, right? They're not ignoring you. It's not personal. They just have so many things going on. And if you don't stay in front of them, they'll just forget about you, you know, a lot of times. And I think that that's really cool that you were able to do that. I know you were taught, you had mentioned before the camps and stuff, and you said that there were some things that were really stressful about that. So how would you deal with that stress when you were going through that process of going through showcases and camps and stuff? I honestly just tried to focus on myself, play my best game. My mom was there with me at every camp and she would tell me what I did good, what I need to work on. But before every camp, I remember her telling me, you worked your entire life for this. Like, this is your time now to like go out and get it. That's really cool, right? And that's something I tell the athletes that I work with is just like focus on what you can control, which is your effort, right? It's your attitude. It's all those things, right? You can't control the way people view you. They, you can't control the coaches, how they evaluate you, whether somebody offers you a scholarship. But what you can do is go out and know like, this is what I want to accomplish and I'm going to give everything I have to get there. And that's, that's really cool because a lot of times it is overwhelming, right? You start to think about what does this person think about me? What did I do? And then all those thoughts that are bogging you down, they just take away from your ability to perform in the moment. I mean, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty impressive. So now you're, you're committed and you're going to be hopefully leaving soon. You got what, like six more months of high school left and then you're, you're going to go off to Louisville. So like, what are, you, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to meeting the team. I follow them all on Instagram. They seem like they're so nice and they're having so much fun. I'm, and I'm looking forward to play. I just, I'm so excited to play at that level and just compete with these girls. And I know it's going to be a challenge. It's not going to be like anything I've done before. I don't know. I'm ready. Have your coaches at Louisville, have they given you any advice about like what you need to do now that you're committed to prepare to come in and compete? They've given us a fitness package and that's really it. Honestly, I think that as it gets closer, they'll give us more, but I think they want us to be in shape when they get there and then work on all the mental and physical, not physical, mental stuff when we get there. Absolutely. Do you have any, do you have any goals for yourself? 
in your freshman year? Um, I want to, I definitely want to play. So the freshman, they, it's not like a seniority there. It's who's ever the best will play. So I'm looking to get some time. I, I would love to start, but I feel like I'm, I have to be realistic. I'm going to the ACC with some of the best girls in the country. I'm hoping that eventually I'm just going to work my way up there. Yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge transition. Is there anything that like you think about now, like if you think about September of 2021, like, is there anything that like you're, you think there's going to be a challenge in front of you that maybe like you're kind of concerns you or that you're preparing for that maybe you're not, you haven't faced before? I'm really scared to be away from home that long. Um, I don't know how, I'm a pretty independent person. I mean, I go to school like 40 minutes away from my house, taking the train. Now I drive, but I still, I think it's just going to be difficult being away from my parents, but I'm hoping that being in like a team environment, combat that. It won't be that hard. <laughs> it's real. I mean, you grow up your whole life, you live in, you know, with your family, and then you all of a sudden you're on your own. I had this conversation with one of my former clients who's now a baseball player at Duke, and he was on the podcast. And when we were working together before he left for school, he was very honest and said the same thing. He's like, I'm worried about getting homesick. He's like, I'm close to my siblings. He's like, I'm close to my parents. Like I've grew up here. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to deal with it. And I think that there's something to just be said for identifying that fear. Like, okay, like, you know what? I am scared. It's, it's okay. Like, how am I going to deal with it? Right. And I think you're right. The feedback he's given me so far, he's been there for a semester is like the teammates, his teammates really made it easy for him to transition because they were so close together. And maybe because some of it was because of COVID, but they were so close and so tight that it was like, like I had like a family there. And I think that that is something that I'm sure will be really helpful when you get, when you get on campus. Yeah, I'm yeah. really looking forward. So do you know academically what it is that you want to, you want to do, you want to study? I'm kind of all over the place. I have some ideas. I might want to do business. I, okay. I applied to the business school and that's what I got in for. I'm taking business, right? I've also, I also applied to the honors college. So I hope, I don't know when I find out for that. If I don't like business, I think I might want to major in chemistry. I really like chemistry. I know. I'm also worried it's going to be really hard playing soccer and doing chemistry or potentially pre-med, but I'm kind of just going to go and see where it takes me. Well, listen, I, I think that one of the big things about jumping from high school to college is time management. You are going to be much more independent in some ways, and there are going to be more obligations. But it also sounds like that you've done a pretty good job of preparing your yourself for managing time because you've got so much going on now and you haven't even got to college. It's almost like that's been preparing you for, for years now. Is that, is that fair to say? <laughs> yeah, that is fair. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think probably your mom and dad will be worse off than you. You'll be there playing soccer, having fun in college, and they'll be, they'll be missing you, waiting, counting the days for you to come home for, uh, for Thanksgiving or something. Yeah, I think both my parents are going to die when I leave. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> my mom admits it, but my dad, my dad jokes saying that he wants me to leave. We're just all so close. I can't even imagine being away What about from your them. brother? Yes, I've, I've actually gotten closer with my brother over these past few years. Uh, he says that he's going to come see my game. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny how that happens as you get older, you get closer to your siblings. Especially when you know they're going to yes. leave. Then you start to get nervous, like, I'm going to miss them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or he's going to miss me driving him everywhere. <laughs> well, he should. How, how old is he now? 16? No, he's um he's 15. 15. So he's, yeah. got a, he's got a couple more years before he's ready to drive. Yes. <laughs> he's going to miss his chauffeur. So what's, what's the rest of the year look like for you, the school year? Uh, well, we're on break right now. And then we're going back. And we have to either choose between going in full time or going online, but you get like a two week period. So I can go online for the first two weeks. And then if I don't like that, I can go in. So I'm person. I have, um, I'm going away for a soccer showcase. So I'm going to have to do online for the first two weeks. I'd rather be in school, especially for my senior year, but kind of have to so <laughs> well I mean it's it is your last year of high school you know you just make the best of it but it is it's a special time you know especially when you know that it's coming to an end so you try to try to make the most out of it just have a few more questions I was just thinking about it sounds like you've had a lot of help right it's been your parents but also your coaches right can you talk about like the advice you've gotten from your coaches on this 
on the decision, on the transition? Like, what have your coaches helped you with along the way? All my coaches, well, with my club team, the biggest thing was just trusting the process and continuing to get better each day. It didn't really matter if we won or we lost. They just wanted us to play well, keep up with the other teams, essentially. They really just emphasized that if you get better and like you want it and you put in the work, things will come out of it. Yeah, that's really good advice. Not not every uh, not every coach looks at it that way, right? Coaches, you know, most of the time want wins and losses. And if you don't win, it's bad. Uh, it's bad. And if you win, it's good, right? But what they're saying is, hey, go in, do the best you can, get better every day. That's what really what you can control. And then things work out in the end, which is clear. It, it seems like it's worked out just fine for you. And you've done exactly what they asked you to do. And now you're, you're exactly where you want it to be. So that's pretty pretty cool thing to see. I'm really excited for you. So I guess if there's, I'll end on this. If there's one thing that you could tell to other high school kids or other young athletes, particularly young girls, what would you say to them about getting to where they want to go as an athlete? Like, what would you say to them about achieving their goals? I would say that you have to be proactive. You have to send emails. You have to go to camps. You have to call these coaches. You really just have to get in front of them because if they don't know who you are, like your dreams will not be reality. Absolutely. It's really good advice. I think it it applies to all areas of life, but you know, especially now with sports being so competitive and scholarships being so competitive and, you know, you've got to stand out, you know, in a lot of different ways. And if you, if you let the process kind of come to you, it's, it's probably not going to work out the way that you want it to. And it sounds like you've, handled it extremely well. And, uh, you know, it's funny, I, I have a daughter who's 10, who's now playing travel soccer. And I just thought about how like this conversation is just so um, relevant to her, because I feel like, you know, young girls, like they struggle with their confidence, they struggle with being good, bad, what other people think about me and to have somebody that like has done it and can kind of be a role model is a really cool thing as a parent to see. And so I hope, uh, I hope she'll get to come see you play one day too. I think that would be really, really cool. Yes. I hope that too. That'd be great. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe we can all come visit and uh, come see a game at Louisville when things are back to normal. So listen, I'm just, I'm so excited for you. You I wish you all the success in the world. I appreciate you coming on and, you know, hopefully we could talk again, maybe next year when you're, uh, when you're, you finished your first year of school and you can tell us how it went. I would really like that. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being on. I I wish you all a Merry Christmas. It's great to see you again. You too. Thanks, Ava. Mike Huber is the founder and owner of Follow the Ball Coaching, located in Fairhaven, New Jersey. He is a mental performance coach and business advisor dedicated to serving athletes just like you reach their full potential on and off the court. The Freshman Foundation is all about helping you get to the next level. For more information, follow along on Instagram at The Freshman Foundation. Please subscribe. Give us a like on iTunes, Spotify, leave a review, tell a friend. Most importantly, come back in two weeks, ready to get better.